Today we're going to revisit the topic of diet and your skin. Without a doubt, 100%, the way that you eat has an impact on the way your skin looks and behaves because, because, what do I always say? The skin, it is a window to what is going on internally. Certain patterns of eating can favor too much inflammation, hormonal alterations that lead to skin problems, skin dullness. Some of the visible signs of skin aging might even be impacted by the foods that you choose to eat on a regular basis. And of course, oil production and inflammatory skin conditions like acne. Certain dietary patterns of eating have a huge impact in particular on acne and sebum production, oil production. Specifically, diets high in hyperglycemic carbohydrates. Why? Well, these types of foods, not by themselves, but just an overall pattern of consistently predominantly eating these foods leads to to an increase in something called insulin-like growth factor one. This is a hormone that directly influences our oil gland to produce more oil. It also has an impact on the cells lining our pore such that we become more inclined as a result of an increase in this to have blackheads and whiteheads, comedones, pore clogging. It's not necessarily the hormone though. It is the elevation in the hormone on a consistent basis as a result of your overall pattern of eating on the regular and your lifestyle choices. Eating a diet rich in high glycemic carbohydrates also lowers insulin -like growth factor binding protein three. This protein is a game changer for your skin because guess what? Normally it binds to the same receptors that our topical retinoids do to help modulate a proper skin cell turnover. So when that gets lowered as a result of our overall pattern of eating, you can see how this coupled with a rise in insulin like growth factor one influences the buildup of cells that get stuck together and clog our pores. When insulin like growth factor one is persistently elevated, not only does it signal to the oil gland to make more oil, making your skin greasy and shiny, but it also causes the oil gland cells to proliferate. What exactly are hyperglycemic carbohydrates anyway? Some people are terrified of carbohydrates, but they are not the devil. However, if you consistently eat certain carbohydrates as your primary fuel source, okay? I'm not talking about enjoying these here and there, but this is how you eat. You eat just the well, yeah, it can lead to problems. And by these, what do I mean? Refined sugary carbohydrates, white bread, white sugar, cakes, cookies, crackers, packaged sweets, pastries, donuts, fruit juice, not fruit, fruit juice. Fruit juice takes the fruit and concentrates it to basically liquid sugar water. Also sugar sweetened beverages and sugar sweetened sodas. A lot of our condiments though have a ton of added sugar, like ketchup, certain barbecue sauces. Aside from the hyperglycemic carbohydrates, which have this influence on our hormonal profiles, there's also evidence that a diet rich in dairy might also influence oily skin and acne breakouts. Now, the research on this is not consistent or crystal clear. There are a lot of gaps in knowledge, inconsistencies, it's all over the place. So I don't think that it's dairy in particular, but let's talk about it. So specifically looking at milk consumption. In several studies, there is an association between consumption of cow's milk and acne. Some of the thought process behind looking at this is that cow's milk is high in casein and whey protein, which are known to increase insulin-like growth factor one. This association seems particularly tight, not just with dairy across the board, but with skim milk in particular. Now, there are a lot of reasons why this association might exist. Association does not prove causation. Just because we see this association sometimes, again, the research is a bit all over the place, just because we see this association sometimes and there are certain potential biologic explanations inherent to dairy milk, like the casein, the whey, we have to look at the whole picture of how people are eating. 
is the stronger association with skim milk because when people drink skim milk, they tend to drink more milk than had they just had a glass of whole milk or partially skim milk. Or what I suspect is milk guilty by association of other dietary patterns that have a negative impact on inflammation, acne, and oil production, such as pouring that skim milk over a huge bowl of frosted flakes, high glycemic load. We really should keep looking at this association because there, there is also the observation that in certain communities where there is no dairy consumption, they have have no acne, specifically no dairy consumption and no consumption of high glycemic processed sugary carbohydrates. But of course that could also be related to their genetics, who knows? There's something called adiponectin that our body produces and it's a golden ticket to reducing inflammation. However, it appears as though a diet rich in high glycemic foods is associated with lower adiponectin levels. Also diets rich in dairy products are also associated with lower adiponectin levels. And this can definitely have an impact on inflammation, on skin problems, on how your skin looks, and also on oil production and acne breakouts. As a matter of fact, acne patients are found to have lower levels of adiponectin. A lot of what we know about how diet impacts our skin does seem to focus on oiliness and acne breakouts. But I also want to highlight another adverse effect of high glycemic load diets on our skin specifically, and that is in the glycation process. Glycation involves sugars basically sticking to proteins and things of that sort in our skin, and that contributes to one of the visible signs of skin aging known as sallowness, that yellowish hue that the skin can take on with age. This is most obvious in paler skin types, and recently I did a video all about skin sallowness, and I touched on how diet is a big influence on sallowness. So definitely check that video out. Insulin-like growth factor being persistently elevated as a result of a high glycemic load diet obviously has a significantly negative impact on our overall metabolic health and may be associated with various health issues such as diabetes. And we see the skin manifestations of these persistently elevated levels of insulin-like growth factor one in that this hormone actually binds to receptors on keratinocytes. Like I said, it stimulates the keratinocytes, the cell that line your pore to divide and get stuck together. But it also can stimulate those keratinocytes to divide abnormally on the sides of your neck, on your face, on the backs of your hands. And that leads to this dark brown velvety skin thickening known as acanthosis nigricans. That is actually a warning sign of insulin resistance. Check out my video on warning signs of insulin resistance. I talk about acanthosis nigricans. Also, also those pesky little skin tags may also be to a certain extent related to insulin-like growth factor being persistently elevated as a result of a hyperglycemic diet. These tend to occur often in areas of friction like under the arms, under the breasts, or the sides of the neck where maybe a necklace is constantly rubbing or your collar. The other thing we need to talk about with regards to how our dietary choices impact our skin that cannot be ignored is how our dietary choices impact our gut microbiome, the bacteria and all the little critters in our gut. Well, a traditional Western diet that is high glycemic load foods and dairy has a negative impact on the overall diversity of our gut microbiome. And these alterations can lead to inflammation throughout the body and may contribute to skin problems like acne breakouts. Still an area of active and ongoing research, but people who lean to more of a Western diet, high in refined sugary carbohydrates, as well as dairy, as well as high in saturated fat, it shows up 100% in the diversity in their gut. Tend to have lower amounts of actinobacteria, higher amounts of proteobacteria, and a shift from firmicates to bacterioides. The individual players in your gut microbiome, it's known as an enterotype. And this particular enterotype that I just described here is really associated with the typical Western diet. And again, if you look in in communities that don't eat this way, they tend to have no or significantly less acne, as well as other inflammatory health problems, metabolic diseases. It's only once you start introducing these high glycemic load diets, okay, because it's diet overall. It's 
not just eating one individual food. It's how you eat overall on a consistent basis. This shows up on your face in the formation of not just acne breakouts, but oiliness, dull skin, uneven skin tone, blotchiness, redness. But it's a signal of something deeper going on internally, especially once you get to the point where you are showing those skin manifestations of insulin resistance. The good news is that by modifying the diet and adopting a diet that is low in ultra processed, refined, sugary carbohydrates that incorporates abundant fruits, vegetables, as well as including omega-3 fatty acids in the diet can definitely have a positive impact on the gut microbiome and on reducing total body inflammation and skin problems. And as a result, the skin potentially can improve as well. Dietary fiber intake is a big thing that should be taken into account when attempting to improve your diet, to improve the balance of microbes in your gut, to favor a healthy gut microbiome and reduced inflammation. By incorporating fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, the fiber content helps tremendously. Not only fuel a healthy gut microbiome, but it allows your body to help handle sugars and to respond efficiently and helps significantly to improve insulin sensitivity. Once you incorporate more whole plant-based foods into your diet, this also allows for more food sourced antioxidants, which are key for controlling inflammation throughout the body. Polyphenols and antioxidants from fruits and vegetables taken together, they help your skin in so many ways, not only with reducing inflammation that can lead to breakage Outs, but also they help in slowing the skin aging process to a more reasonable rate because I'm not about pretending like we can halt skin aging or that we should desire that. I'm talking about let's bring, let's dial it to a reasonable rate. What we want, what is a good rate for our health, like what is consistent with our time here on this planet. And of course, maybe, maybe a little bit slower than our chronological age, okay? But overall, like not erasing um, aging, but making us age in a healthy manner that is to be expected for 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 our life out here on this planet. Also, you hear a lot of people telling you you need to take a resveratrol supplement. Well, um, you know, the polyphenols in grape skin do have health benefits, but that should be pursued by introducing those foods into your diet, not by going after a supplement. I caution when it comes to antioxidant supplements, they definitely can backfire because like I said, you can have two too much of a good thing. And taking in high amounts of antioxidants, it's actually been associated with several negative health effects. So by high amounts of antioxidants, I'm not talking about eating a ton of vegetables and plants and things of that sort. I'm talking about supplements where it's like concentrated, very high, abnormal, not normal. Um, that really can backfire. Like vitamin E, for example, in supplement form, not from foods, but vitamin E from supplements is associated with an increased risk of cancer. And so I don't suggest going the supplement route when it comes to antioxidants. I, I think that that is playing a potentially dangerous game, especially when we have so many excellent food sources. Now, a lot of you guys struggle with a metabolic condition known as polycystic ovary syndrome. And you find my videos here about acne, about hirsutism, about pattern hair loss. These are conditions that affect women with PCOS because they often struggle with insulin resistance come here seeking ways to perhaps change up their diet to support their overall health. And so some of the things we have highlighted today, they're not going to cure PCOS. They're not going to cure fertility issues that you might have. They're not going to cure any underlying insulin resistance, but they definitely can impact these things positively or something that you really, really need to consider balancing your diet, especially if you do eat a diet that tends to lean more towards the convenience foods, which are very high in um, refined sugary carbohydrates that have a negative effect on our, our body inflammation. You guys know I'm not a big promoter of dietary supplements, but a dietary supplement specifically for PCOS and this insulin resistance and the acne breakout specifically that I have actually a dedicated video on. It's called Myo Inositol. And there's actually some good uh, research, 
promising research on supplementing with this for PCOS and showing a reduction in acne, specifically in women who have PCOS, who have the signs of hyperandrogenism, the androgen hormones causing more oiliness, the insulin-like growth factor causing more oiliness, causing more acne breakouts, causing the hair follicles on your scalp to miniaturize and to lead to pattern hair loss, causing um, the hair follicles on your face, you know, flip side to respond by forming coarse terminal hairs. So I'm going to link that video down below in the description box. Check it out, especially if you deal with PCOS, because I do a deep dive there on the research, the dosing parameters and things of that sort. I think you'll find it very informative. So what is the take home point here? Like how should we be eating? Try and eat as best as you can a wide variety of foods in their whole food state. Fruits, vegetables, grains, legumes, lean proteins. I don't believe that eliminating dairy is necessary because there are many communities out there who do consume dairy and have no acne and it's not always consistent. I also think it may be related to our genetics. You know, some groups of people um, do not process dairy well. They don't digest milk, for example, well at all. Anyway, y'all, let me know in the comments what you think. Now, if you're new here, I actually have a ton of content on my channel about nutrition and skin, different supplements, different nutrients, different vitamins, the signs and symptoms when those are deficient. I also have videos on supplements specifically, any kind of supplement pretty much that you might want to know about, selenium, collagen, hyaluronic acid, ceramides, B12, iron, you name it. I pretty much have a video on it. But if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.